Hi, this video is for students at the beginning of Humanities 115, Critical Thinking in Everyday Life. The purpose of this video is to provide students with an overview of what is covered in a course. Consider this overview like a map. Looking at a map ahead of time gives you a sense of where you're going. A course overview is the same thing. We're going to be looking ahead. The hope is that knowing what we will be covering and how the topics fit together with the overall concept will give you a better understanding each week. Additionally, having this overview can help you focus on what concepts are important and how they will connect with the overall purpose. This is only an overview, therefore I'm only going to briefly touch on each topic. Throughout the course we will go into much more detail on the topics, so don't worry if there's something that's not quite clear in the overview. Again, the goal is just to give you an outline or map of where we're going. So let's start. First, I'm going to provide you with a visual of the course overview. In the center, you can see that the overall goal of the course is to become an improved critical thinker. Surrounding this concept are five elements. Each of these elements represents one of the weeks and topics for our course. We will look at each of them a bit more closely. Starting in the center, the overarching goal is to improve our critical thinking skills. Over the past several years, the phrase critical thinking has appeared in more and more job descriptions. More employers are saying that critical thinking is what they are seeking from in their employees. Knowing this, how do students position themselves not only to think critically, but to be strong critical thinkers and be able to demonstrate how they will use those skills? Understanding that we need to show the employers in a job interview and then also in our work, critical thinking. In addition to career application, critical thinking is going to be fundamental to your long-term learning. Many of you are at the beginning of your bachelor's degree, and there are many assignments, tests, and papers ahead. Learning improved critical thinking skills now will help increase what you learn over the course of your degree. The quality of your work and the overall value will be improved by applying critical thinking. Last, it's important to note that there are varying levels of critical thinking across groups of people, at your work, in your day-to-day -day life, and in this class. No matter where you are as a critical thinker, there's always room for improvement in time and places that you can grow. So let's take a look at week one. In week one, we're going to look at what is critical thinking. The reading materials provide definitions to encourage us to look at our own thinking differently. It also gives us ideas on what our current stage of thinking is. Understanding what is meant by critical thinking and where we are as thinkers ourselves is the first step to improving critical thinking. In week two, we will study how things can get in the way of our thinking. The course readings refer to this as barriers to our thinking. In order to ensure that we're thinking clearly and examining our thoughts, we need to be aware of things that can prevent us from this, things like internal barriers. Stress is an example of this. Stress can prevent us from thinking clearly. And there's also things that are external barriers. For example, the media. The media certainly can influence us on how we feel about a certain news story. In week two, the readings focus so that students can learn more about these different barriers recognize when they're impacting their thinking, and come up with ideas and strategies to overcome these barriers. In week three, we look at the evidence that we're gathering in this process. To think critically about information, we need to ask questions and gain information. It's important to know whether or not this information can be trusted. To help break down this question, we will look at two parts of the information. First, we're going to look at the reliability of the message. This is the content of what's being said. For example, if we turned on the news today and heard that it was going to rain, the message is, it's going to rain. As critical thinkers, we need to ask if we can rely on this information. Is the message supported by outside evidence? For example, is it cloudy outside? Is there radar data that backs up the statement, it's going to rain? In addition, to the message, it's important that we consider the person giving the message. Can we trust the messenger? There are several elements to go into this. In our weather example, do we trust the weather person? How does he or she know this information? Do they have education in meteorology? Are they someone that we've trusted in the past that's given us good information? Things of this nature. 
So we will then apply this to broader, more complex topics in week three and find ways that we can confirm evidence to help us be a better critical thinker. In week four, we are going to look at the material of problem solving in relation to critical thinking. Instead of solving problems by selecting the first solution that comes to mind, critical thinkers approach problems in a systematic way to consider all possible outcomes. The readings provide a five-step problem-solving model, which is, appears on the screen. This model is an excellent framework that problems are examined in analytically and that solutions can be considered so that the best decision is made. As I said, we'll go into more detail on each of these steps in week four. Last, in week five, we can look at how we will incorporate what we learned in weeks one through four in our lives. Like any skill, improving critical thinking takes practice. In this week, we will focus on how we can create specific plans to continue to practice and apply this information. Anytime we want to create a habit, it's important that we provide a plan that's specific and has measurable outcomes. In week five, we will consider how students can incorporate this lesson in their lives going forward, including the next course and throughout their career. It's an important time to commit yourself to becoming an improved critical thinker and taking the time necessary to apply these steps. So let's take one more look again at the overview. I'm hopeful that this framework will provide you a context for the material that will be covered in the five weeks of Hume 115. You can print this out and reflect back on the overall course goal of the course, which is to become an improved critical thinker. Hopefully this helps provide you a map of where we're going. Thank you for taking the time to watch the presentation and good luck in Humanities 115.